Well, good morning, and welcome to King Creek Baptist Church. Glad you're joining us today, and thank the Lord for the privilege of being here, for all that God's done for us in this day, and we want to give God the glory. Let's open with a word of prayer. Our Father, thank you for what you've done for us. We just pray, Heavenly Father, that you would add your blessing to the service. We know that, dear God, if you do not meet with us, that uh, the service will be in vain. And we just pray, God, that you'd be with us and help us. In Christ's lovely name that we pray, amen. All right. We'll be in the church hymnal, page 220.
this song is very good. And this song's got some good meaning to it. We have God as our vision. And his word and his ways, that's what we need to think upon. That's what Stephanie and I talked about in Sunday school this morning. We were talking about the, the main subject is secret sins of, of our life. We need to think on God and on his word. Let him be our vision. Follow him. you to come and be a part uh, of the service here in the, inside the building and thank God for all that's here this morning. All right, I want you to turn to the book of John, John chapter number 12. Now we're going to start there and then we will move other places through the Bible. Um, but um, as we prepare for the sermon this morning, as we go through, in John chapter 12, and I'm going to begin with verse 23, John chapter number 12, verse 23, we're going to be talking today on judgment, judgment, and uh, after we read a, our scripture here, we'll come back to that thought for a few minutes. In John 12 and verse 23, And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, or truly, truly. Anytime you see a double verily or any, anything repeated twice like, like that, in the Bible, it's very important, truly, very, very, or truly, truly, I say unto you, except a 
corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone, but if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my, follow, my father honor. <clears throat> now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I into the world came unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. And the, pe the people therefore that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake unto John, spake to John. Jesus said, Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now this is the judgment of this world. This is our, really our key verse. Verse 31. Now this is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. Our Father, again, we thank you for this great opportunity to be able to call upon thy name. And we pray that you'd be with us uh, as we study this bit of an unusual type message. Uh, here on judgment. In fact, we're going to be preaching on four judgments. But we pray that you would help us and bless and help in the Word of God. If there's anybody that's unsaved here or lost, we pray that this would be the time that they would be uh, accept you as their personal Savior. What is judgment? Well, to a certain extent, we all are judgmental in some ways. We pass our feelings or what we, our judgment off on different things. For instance, you like a certain make of an automobile. Uh, someone else likes uh, a different type of automobile. Or you may altogether like something else. Um, you may prefer a motorcycle or uh, you may prefer a, uh, a bicycle if you're young enough. Uh, but uh, whatever your means, but judgment is revealing our shortcomings, where we fail are things that we're going to have to face is judgment. We don't like judgment. None of us like to go to court. Even to be on the jury. None of us like that. And by, by the way, that's what that does. That You pass judgment. Ever how many is on that jury, if it's 12 or, or whatever, you listen to the evidence and you pass judgment. You find that individual guilty or innocent. Or you and your fellow jurors. But the judgments in the Bible are, are to our betterment. And by the way, we can't get around those judgments. That's in God's word. Now, in verse number 31, again, 
He says, now this is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. As I'm saying today, today we're talking about four different judgments out of the Word of God. They're all in the Bible. And we're going to look at it. The first one that we're looking at this morning is in the scripture that we read. And it's the judgment of our sins. Our sins and this judgment took place at Calvary. Calvary's been a long time. Judgment on our sins has already taken place. Judgment, at, at, it took place at Calvary. Now, the people, look at the, as I said, this judgment of our sins. We first of all look at the people of sin. Over in the book of Romans, uh, in Romans chapter number 3, uh, it is just full of evidence of our judgments. In Romans chapter number 3 and verse number 23, the Bible starts there and it says, For we have sinned. All of us have sinned. And we have come short of the glory of God. In other words, we can't pass the judgment. We can't pass the judgment. And then in uh, chapter number 5 and verse number 21, in chapter 5 and verse number 21, the Bible said that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. People, the people of sin. Who is the people of sin? All of us. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's what the Bible says in Romans 3, 23. All and the word all is an inclusive word, and it means everybody. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Doesn't matter how good you are, how honest you are, how faithful you are to whatever you do, but I want you to know that the Bible says that you have sinned. We've all sinned. We have sinned. The, and we have all sinned. And the only hope that we have for our sin is through Christ. In Romans 5, 12, and I read, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world. Who was that one man? Adam. Adam. He doesn't mention Eve, and we know the story of Adam and Eve, but the promise was with Adam. And wherefore by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Let me tell you a little secret. It doesn't matter if you're in this building this morning and you're 90 years old. It doesn't matter if you're in this building this morning and or wherever you are and you're 95 years old or 98 years old and you still have all of your faculties and you're able to run a mile at 95 years old. You're going to die. The only thing, the exception to that is, if the Lord comes first. Amen. 
And then you must be ready. You must be born again. Amen. If you're not ready when the Lord's come, your good works will not last. They won't stand. You may be an honest man, woman, boy, and girl. You may have done your very best, but your very best will not make it until you've accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. So we see the people, the, the people of sin. Who is the people? All of us. At one time we were all black, hardened, dirty, filthy sinners. Then the penalty of sin. Romans 6 and verse number 23. We find the penalty of sin. That's passed upon all men. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, I, I went to the doctor this week. I have to go once in a while. I, but for a man my age, my doctor says I'm in, I'm doing pretty good. There's a few little bumps, but uh, for a person my age, and he was surprised that I was still at. Very active. And, but, you know what? That doesn't mean anything other than just helps me here. Because it doesn't matter. Because the Bible said the wages of sin is death. We're all going to go the way of the grave. Unless we go unless the Lord comes first. That exception. But the gift of God is eternal life. God's made a way. He, you know what he did with you? He gave you that gift. He gave us that gift. He sent his only begotten son to die for you and me that every one of us might go to heaven and not have to go to that awful place called hell. Amen. But your good works are not going to get you there. I, I believe that good works are important. I think you ought to be faithful to church. I think you ought to be faithful in paying your tithes. I think you ought to be faithful in reading your Bible. I think you ought to be faithful in a lot of things. But what's going to take us to heaven is whether or not we know Christ is our personal Savior. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Not through the pastor, not through the any, anybody that's doing anything at the house of God, but it's through Jesus Christ. Amen. So he's the that's the, that is the, the 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 penalty of sin is that we're all going to die, all going to die. But we have a gift, and that gift is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Look at the next thing, the next judgment. I mean, the next part of this judgment. We're talking about the judgment of our sins. The part, the plan for sin. Over in John, where I read, in John's Gospel, where I read in chapter number 1, and verse number 29, we find there God's plan for sin. The judgment, God's plan for sin. 
He says in John 1, 29, the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God. I like the way Tom Hayes explains that word behold. It simply means looky, looky. In our mountain vernacular. Look, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. So that is the plan for sin over in 2 Corinthians. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 and verse number 21, we find the Word of God tells us there, for he hath made him. Who is the him? That is Christ. For he hath made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. I want to call your attention to something. Look at that word sin in the singular. You may say, well, I'm full of sins, and you are, and I am too. But it's the S-I-N that Christ died for, and that takes care of the rest of it. For he made him to be sin for us. He died in our place on the cross. So we find the judgment of our sins. Then over in the next judgment is over in book in the book of First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter number ten. Remember I told you that there were several of these judgments. And we're talking about judgment here. Four Judgments, And this is the second one that we're looking at here today. And it is in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 and 32. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Give none offense either to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Now this judgment is the judgment of oneself. You and I, we've all got to be in judgment. First Corinthians 10. Now this judgment takes place in our daily life. Every day. Every day we live, there's things that we have to do. We have to confess sin, right? Every day. You say, oh no, I'm perfect. No, you're not. And no, I'm not. We're not perfect. We have to confess our sins. That ought to be one of the things that we do throughout all the day. Just ask the Lord to forgive us. This in line, this particular judgment, the judgment of oneself, is it is in the light of the scripture and the Bible is uh, three, three things for us. The Bible Number one, the Bible is a map for direction. Why do you think God tells us that we need to read the Word of God? The Bible, in the light of the, the Scriptures, the Bible is the map for direction. 
or direction. How do you know you're doing the how how do you know we're doing the right way? We've got the Bible. I'm glad that we don't have a an old man. Well, we got an old man, but we don't have a, an old fella that stands up and speaks in an unknown language and reads the scripture in an unknown language where the common people can hear it. I'm glad we have the Word of God in our language. Do you know what a privilege it is for here in America and in whatever country? But you know, a lot of countries don't have the privilege of the Bible like we do. I mean, you take a Bible. Uh, one of our missionaries was telling the story here. You take a Bible into one of these uh, uh, far, some of these countries, some of these underdeveloped countries, and they'll take it apart, and and they'll give they'll give some scriptures, they'll give a page of scripture to someone else, and they'll give a page to somebody else, and and they'll just have a page, but they memorize it, the Word of God. They have the Bible. What a privilege it is. And it takes place, all of this, we have this Bible for a map of direction in how we live. There's no excuse in America for men and women not to know how to live in, and, and please the Lord as many Bibles as we have in America. The next thing, not only is it a map for our direction, but it's a manual for our Discretion. It's a manual for how we're to live. What, how do we know what a Christian is supposed to do? You got the Bible. How do you know that you're to be at the house of God? You know why? We've got the Bible. It tells us to, to be not to forsake the assembling of yourselves together. So if that's in the Bible, it must be important, isn't it? The Bible. It's, it's a map for our direction. It's a manual for our discretion. And it's a mirror for our discipline. It tells us how to, for us to discipline ourselves in serving the Lord. All of us. Every one of us. Now, the next thing it does, not only is it the light of the Scripture, the Bible is, is the light of, the, of God's Word. It's the light of the Scripture. But it's the leadership of the Spirit. How will I know what to do? Because the Bible tells us so. It guides the saints. Go back to the book of John, if you will, this morning. And chapter 16 and verse number 13 in John chapter 16 and verse number 13, the Word of God tells us a few things here. It said, How be it? Uh, how be it when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. There's no reason. If you're a born again Bible, if you're a born-again believer and the Holy Spirit lives within your heart, there's absolutely no reason that you ought to be ignorant in God's Word. You've got the Spirit of God dwelling on you on the inside. Amen. And he says, How be it when the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you unto all truth. For he shall not speak of himself and Whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. I, I want to give you a little story. I, I don't want to call any names, but there's people, and there's still some around today, right around today. I know preachers that can't read the Bible. Preachers, old older men, some of them are over 90. But they're still preaching 
But when someone else will get up in the, someone else gets up in the pulpit, this one particular one I, I know, his wife will get up and read the scripture. She'll sit in the back, in the pew, or stand up in the pew, and she will read the scripture. Her husband will come into the pulpit and preach the word of God, and I mean preach the word of God and can't read very little of the Bible itself. Because we have the word of God. The Bible says in verse 13, how be it when the, he, the spirit of truth is come. What does that? The spirit reveals it, right? Amen. And he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Look in the next verse. Not only will he guide the saints, but he will glorify the Savior. He will glorify the Savior. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto me. He'll glorify. The next thing he will do, not only will he be the light in the scriptures, and not only will he be the leadership of the Spirit, but in the leadership of the, in the leadership of the Savior, number one, we will re recognize his authority. I'll tell you, my, my mother, she and a lot of the older generation of people they would they they respected the Bible. I mean, they put it in a prominent place. They never crammed their Bible down in something and have their pages all bent up and everything. They carried their Bible, or if they had a cover, they put it in a, a decent a cover and they carried. It. You know, see them. You you would never see them throwing the Bible. They would, it always had a prominent place in, in, in the home. So we need to recognize its authority. Then we need to reverence its ambition. We need to reverence the Bible. Now I want you to see the third judgment. We're moving on. We see the judgment of our service over in now in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 and verse number 10. 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. We're going to see this reverence, the judgment of our service. 5 and verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one might receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Where does this judgment take place? At the judgment seat. Did you know you and I, if we're saved, and I believe we have been, many of us, and maybe all of us have all been saved. But I want to tell you something. We're going to stand before God at the judgment seat. I personally don't believe it will be a bubblegum chewing event. I think it's going to break our hearts. To be there. I think one of the things that we're going to know, we're going to see at the judgment seat, we're going to see what we could have really done for the Lord. Can you imagine Eve, Adam and Eve, 
God created Adam and Eve and placed them in a perfect environment. Can you imagine Eve finding out what she could have already she could have done for the Lord and what a beautiful place and what a place this would have been if she hadn't had yielded her and Adam to the sin of the serpent. Judgment seat. As to our faithfulness, look over in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 2. In, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 4 and verse number 2, the Bible tells us there, Moreover, it is required in stewards, that's people doing God's work, that's Christians, that a man be found faithful. The most important thing that you and I are doing in this day and hour that we're living is to be faithful to whatever God has called you to do and whatever God's putting you, you to do is be faithful. Be faithful. Then as to not only to our faithfulness, but as to our fervency. We ought to act like we enjoy serving the Lord. Amen. We ought to put a little excitement in our life. As for the fervency, the Bible says over in Acts chapter number 18 and verse number 25, in Acts 18 and verse number 25, the Bible tells us there, this man, and he's talking about Apollos at Ephesus, this man was instructed in the way of the Lord. And being fervent in scripture, in, in the spirit, being fervent in the, uh, uh, in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. Now that's the spirit of our fervent, the, the fervency of our life in, in, our, in the spirit. Then the next thing is in service. In Romans 12, In, in Romans 12 and verse 11, here's an important scripture in the Bible. In Romans 12 and verse 11. Not slothful in business. What business is he talking about? The Lord's business. We sometimes think about that as our, in our church business, in our uh, things that we do here to church. Like if we're going to build something, if we're going to do these things, it may have a part of that. But what he's talking about is serving the Lord, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Then that's talking about his fervency in his spirit and in this service. Then as to we ought to, the judgment of our service as to our fellowship. Our fellowship, one with another. Look at 1 John chapter number 1, verse 6 and 7. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Amen. Now we want to look now at the fourth judgment. 
And that is the judgment of sinners. And this will take place at the great white throne of judgment. God hasn't changed his plan. Now, this will take place. This is, look, turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 20, and verse number 11. Let me give you something right quick. When you are born again, when you, when you accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you will not go to the judgment, the, the white, great white throne judgment. You will go to the judgment seat of Christ, which is the next thing right after the rapture. But why? Because you're already forgiven your sins. You're not going to give an account of your sins at the judgment seat. We're going to give an account of our works. And I believe, even so much for this, we're going to see things that we could have been doing. That it was available for us to do. I think as a church, I think as a congregation of people, when we get to heaven, we're going to see what we really could have done for the Lord if we human beings hadn't stood in the way and hindered it. Now, judgment of sinners. This will take place at the great white throne. This judgment after the millennial is this judgment is after the millennial reign of Christ. Now here's about four things right quick and I'll try to not be boring you to death but here's four things right quick that's going to take place. Number one is this the person of the judge. Now that judge is over in the book of John chapter 5 and verse number 22. We'll see a picture of him chapter 5 and verse number 22. It always made me nervous to go in, into a courtroom and to have to appear before the judge. Even if I was a juror or just anything. That judge made me nervous. You think about having to stand before the judge of the whole world. The person of the judge in verses, chapter 5, verse 22. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. We're going to stand before the Son of God. God the Father, God the Son. And the Son, we're going to stand for that Son. And we're going to give an account of our failure to accept Christ as our Savior, if, we're, if, if that's true in your life. Then the next thing, the people that's going to be judged over in uh, the book of Revelation. I, th I think it's chapter uh, 20 and verse number 12. And I saw both the small and the great stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead which ju were judged out of those things which were written in these books according to the works. Then In chapter 21 and verse number 22, we see the progeny of the judgment, uh, the one of the judge. And I saw in uh, chapter 21, verse 12, and I had a great wall and a high, uh, and a great wall and a high and high and twelve gates, and the gates were. Uh, twelve angels and names were written thereon which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel now that is this progeny of the judgment then the punishment look at verse 14 chapter 20 and verse 14 
and the dead and hell were cast into the lake of fire the second day. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. We're talking about the judgment of sinners. If you're a sinner here this morning, or you're listening to me over Facebook, or you're listening to me through some other means, if you're a sinner, this is your judgment right there. Unless you come and bow at the throne of grace and ask Jesus Christ to save your soul. And I'll tell you, if you're lost this morning, you need to ask Christ to come into your life. Actually, I'm going to ask you to come and just play us a, a song a little bit, just a, a little, just as I am, will work real good. And I want to ask you a personal question. You that are in this side of this building, you that are listening to me and watching me over Facebook, and those of you that are listening to me where, by, by radio or whatever means you're listening, I'm going to ask you a question. If you died today, where would you spend eternity? that and if you're holding on to some of the Lord little tear that you shed or some little something that you did you better know you're born again because I'm going to tell you hell is an awful place to have to spend eternity service tonight at 6 o'clock back here in the, in the building and don't forget to be praying for that and be a part of our service. God bless you. Good to see you this morning and good to have you.